All right, this fucking thing. This fucking thing. So I finally had a chance to sit down and play a bit, not much, a bit of WWE 2K20. I can't stand these games in general. I used to like the older wrestling games, like the SmackDown ones, and like the when they were fun arcadey things, not whatever the 2K series has become. So I don't like them in general. So I had no real intention of playing this for like a proper critical video or anything. But a lot of people said, you know, Jim, talk about it. I'm surprised you haven't talked about it because you talk about shitty games and also you like the wrestling. Both of these things are true. Um, but I didn't want to play it and I didn't have much time, but I finally had a chance to, to give it a go. I've not encountered some of the really wacky glitches. I've included some for you to look at. That's coming up. Um, this is from my play session this morning. We've got Dana Brooke here on the left, completely forgotten how to get into a wrestling ring. Although the way she's booked on WWE TV, that's fairly believable because they don't put her in matches. But anyway, she's got a chair in her hand and she just doesn't know what to do. Um, that's an example of the AI's behavior in this game. That's fairly standard throughout. It's a hideous game. Visually, just, I mean, I won't say it looks last gen, because that's often hyperbolic, but it don't look much better. Don't look much fucking better. Um, the character models do not look like the wrestlers. You look at Alexa Bliss, she looks like fucking Robert Zadar. They are creepy, they are dead-eyed. At one point, Ricochet appeared, and the, the flesh around his eyes, just around his eyes, a thin seam, hadn't been rendered, so I could see all the background behind his head. We just saw there Baron Corbin just teleported into the ring. He was out on the ramp and was just like, you know what? I'll be in the ring now. Why not? Um, and those are just like, like I had a match with, a, like I was playing Alexa Bliss, and her hair just went all like medusery. It just had a life of its own, just just stretched out. Um, weird, just silly shit. That's I've not encountered the truly broken stuff so far. I might continue to give it a go because I mean this is this is the shittiest game of the year contender easy. Um, even without the glitches, it's just a bad game. Um, so here we've got, I'll put links to these videos in the description. I didn't want to just show like entire videos that other people have done. So I've done a few clips from some people's videos. I've listed who they are and what the videos are in the, uh, in the corner there. And I'll do a link in the description. But this is an example of just how friggin' wild it gets. I mean, I mean though. And a lot of people, it's been interesting for me as someone who follows um, wrestling news and stuff like that, hearing like some wrestling critics who don't play video games wonder what the hell's going on here. Um, I heard uh, Brian Alvarez and Mike Sempervive um, arguing over who they think is to blame here, whether it's 2K Games' fault, whether it's um, WWE's fault, um, Brian Alvarez didn't know what AAA meant for video games. It's kind of adorable. I mean, he also said that he doesn't play video games because he's got a life. So, you know, fair enough. But he's the one complaining about wrestling. Um, <laughs> I say that with all due respect, actually. I, I like Brian Alvarez. Um, specifically started listening to Wrestling Observer just to hear him freak out about the Hell in a Cell disaster that happened earlier this year. Um, it's, it's so inexcusably shoddy. It's an absolute atrocious mess. Um, there have been like discussions as to whose fault this is. Like apparently, WWE um, want a game out every year, you know, because you know it's like sports, so we've got to have a new game out every year with roster updates. And it's suggested that there was developer changes um, said to have happened with this, uh, so everything was rushed, even by the usual standards. These games are always rushed to come out, you know, around this time of year. Um, but it's just been especially bad. And it's a terrible look for two, uh, for WWE, who are not in the best of ways right now. They're currently embroiled in a controversy over a racist-looking shirt for one of their wrestlers. They had a, a black wrestler who had a T-shirt design temporarily up on the store that was a red mouth on a black shirt with white teeth that was his name inside. And it looked bad. It didn't look good. And this is um, coming just before, like, like this Thursday, uh, they, are, they have another show in Saudi Arabia, which they get ridiculous amounts of money for. 
in exchange for glossing over the atrocities and the, the just the violent shit and the oppression that goes on there. And they go over there and do their little shows and they try and downplay as much as possible that their events are taking place in Saudi Arabia when they're on American TV. It's spineless, it's pathetic. Um, you've got AEW, All Elite Wrestling on TNT now. Uh, ratings wise, I mean, you know, what do TV ratings mean these days? I'm not so sure, but it's still bad news when you've got AEW going head to head with WWE's NXT show and AEW is killing it. They're doing over a million views, a uh, million viewers, and NXT is not. They're around the 700 thou. Um, SmackDown this week, uh, last week, was on FS1 instead of Fox. They just moved to Fox. And then after a couple of weeks, got bumped for a sporting event. So they were on FS1 and did, um, what was it they said? Like somewhere over 800,000 when, norm- when they've been doing about 2 million. And they're down from 4 million for their uh, their debut on Fox. And this is all, you know, on top of the WWE product. And it is a product just being shit. I mean, this is my chance to actually rant. I don't get normally get an excuse to talk about it on this channel. Um, WWE is fucking dog shit lately. Awful television. Embarrassing, weird television. They've got a... Uh, an angle going on right now where a character, a wrestler, Rusev, who is beloved, um, his wife is now making out with another wrestler, Bobby Lashley, in public for no good reason. At first, it was because Rusev wasn't man enough. Then it was because Rusev wanted too much sex and wanted to have a baby, and she didn't want to have a baby, so she started fucking Bobby Lashley. Um, and none of this was built up to. It was just one week. Lana was making out with Bobby Lashley and it's so embarrassing and the whole WWE product is an embarrassment um, they truly are like the electronic arts to, to put this in terms that people who don't watch wrestling might, might better appreciate they are the electronic arts of, of the wrestling um, business uh, they are terrible, it's glossy, like I'll say this right, people say wrestling's fake and all that blah blah blah, right wrestling is predetermined yeah, wrestling's predetermined WWE is fake with their fucking scripted promos and making wrestlers and commentators repeat the same things over and over again. The word historic is said like every other word on that show. Historic opportunity, opportunity historic, first time ever in WWE history. History making, groundbreaking, historic, opportunity, opportunity. When, the, when there's a tagline attached to a pay-per-view, wrestlers have to say that tagline in conversation as if they mean to say it in conversation. And it's so unnatural. Like uh, Survivor Series they do every year. And the tagline is, it's, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, the only time of year, the only time of year the Raw and SmackDown go head-to-head in competition. And in the middle of promos and conversations, wrestlers will have to say that. Like, oh, I want to compete this year in Survivor Series. It's the only time of the year that SmackDown and Raw go head-to-head in competition. And that will be said several times during the show by different wrestlers in different contexts. And the contexts are different, but the sentence is always the same, like verbatim, like a robot. The show is so dear leader. They're all marching in lockstep. They're all programmed to say and act and behave the same way, the same things. It's a creepy, weird little television program is WWE. And this video game is is suitable for it because it's cheap. Vince McMahon is a billionaire and they just had a King of the Ring tournament, right? And the throne and the crown for it was like cheap party city shit. They have Skype interviews uh, that are laggy and awful because they get a bit of money from mentioning Skype. And they make billions of dollars. They've got multi-million dollar TV deals. Vince McMahon is a billionaire and they are so fucking cheap. It's unbelievable. And this game is so fucking cheap in terms of presentation and visuals and, and stability. It still costs as much as a regular fucking video game. But it is so tacky and cheap and broken. And that's the video game WWE fucking deserves. Is a statement from WWE Games on Twitter. We are listening closely to the feedback that's been shared regarding WWE 2K20 and are aware of the concerns some players are reporting. 
We're working hard to investigate these concerns and address them as necessary. We expect to have an initial patch ready in the next two weeks, with others to follow. Stay tuned to blah 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 blah. You had to have been aware. 2K and the developers and all that had to have been fucking aware before they squirted that piece of shit out. But they just didn't care because deadlines are more important than selling a quality product. That's all it comes down to is deadlines are more important than you getting your money's worth as a customer. That's the video game industry all round. And anyway, that's what I think of WWE 2K fucking 20. I downloaded that Chikara game recently. I haven't given it a go yet. That looks like it might be fun. I'm going to give that a go later. Anyway, WWE 2K20 is a fucking disaster. But, as I said, it's the disaster WWE deserves.